fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. Hooray! The Billings Gang were known throughout the Western Territory for their ruthlessness and daring. Dirk Billings, the leader of the outlaw gang, planned things well, so that in spite of their daring, the gang managed always to elude the law. It was in broad daylight that the Billings Gang held up the Redville Cafe. Reach everybody, this is a hold up. Hey, it's the Billings Gang. Yeah, the sheriff's right in here. All right, get their guns, men. Right. Sheriff, do something. They won't have a chance to get away, don't worry. Oh, you think not? I men have your guns. Now every one of you sit down on the floor and take off your boots pronto. Do like I said, and we'll start shooting. All right, throw your boots into a pile in the center of the cafe. Hurry it up. <laughs> now stand up while a couple of my men mix up those boots. All right, Luke, Fred, scramble up those boots while the rest of you get their wallets. Huh? Like I said before, you won't have a chance to get away, and I mean it. Uh, it'll take them an hour to find the right boots. By that time, we'll be plenty far away, sir. And it was also broad daylight when the Billings gang held up the express train outside of Rock Hill. Ticket, ticket, please. All right, Luke. Here comes the conductor now. Get ready. Yeah. All set. Do you think the others are where they should be? Yeah. Fred and Red are up in the other coach just behind the express car. There's Lou and Jack up there near the door of this coach. Here he comes. Ticket, please. All right, never mind the tickets, conductor. Pull the cord up there and stop the train. Get out your wallets, everybody. No funny business. There are two more men with guns up there near the door. Now, listen here. You can't get away with this. Stop the train or you'll get a bullet. Well, I guess I'll have to. That better be the right signal. Train stopping, Judge. Yeah. Give me your coat and that conductor's hat. Yeah, now, look, you, you, you can't get Shut away. Shut up and make it fast with that coat and hat. Yeah, here they are. Yeah. Lay them on the seat there. All right. This will keep you quiet, mister. No, no. 
Well, put this coat and conductor's hat on, Luke. Then walk up to the engine and settle things up there. The others are getting to the express car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm ready. When you get finished here, run up front to the engine. We'll uncouple it and use it to get away. It was a few days after the train robbery that the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Tonto, rode the trail toward Rock Hill. Dirk Billings and his outlaw gang must be hiding somewhere in the vicinity, Tonto. I heard the engine was found just a few miles away from where the robbery took place. Ah, isn't that right? Billings used clever way to keep from being followed. He's clever, all right. <laughs> yeah. The cafe hole up in Redville wasn't any laughing matter. The method Billings used to delay the sheriff and the men he robbed was funny. Well, uh, me here men have plenty hard time finding right boots. <laughs> so far, no one seems to be able to get on their trail. Now look, Tonto, there's a good place to pitch camp. That clearing to the left. Ah, that's right. We'll head for it. After we pitch camp, you can help me fix a disguise. Then we'll go to the cafe in Rock Hill and see if we can get any news. Come on. Get him up, Scout. After getting settled in their camp, the Lone Ranger and Tonto worked for some time on a disguise. Finally, it was finished to their satisfaction, and the Lone Ranger appeared to be a nondescript ranch hand. Uh, 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 plenty good, Kimasabi. Yes, thanks for the help, Tonto. Now let's ride to Rock Hill and see what we can find out. Easy, big fellow. Easy, Scout. Easy, Pana. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. A short time later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto arrived in Rock Hill. Leaving their horses in a place where they wouldn't attract attention, they went to the cafe. Something for you, mister? Not now, thanks. We're waiting for someone. Just as you say, Texas. You can wait on me again. Same thing. Right. Hey, seems like I saw you someplace before. You ever been to Redville? If I have, it's none of your business. Just give me what I ordered and forget the question. Sure, I was just asking, that's all. There you are. Hmm. Oh. Fellas seem mighty touchy. Yes. Strange a simple question like that affected him so much. Yeah. Next time, don't be so nosy. Might get you into trouble. Huh. Sure seems to get plenty riled when I ask him if he'd been to Redville. Yeah, so unnoticed. Are you from Redville? Yeah, I was working in the cafe there when it was held up. Quit and come down here to work a short time ago. I see. Come on, Tonto. We'll come back here later. Uh, <laughs> There goes the man who was so touchy. Ah. Why do we leave the place, Kimasabi? Because it struck me that that man's strange attitude and the fact that the barkeep was in Redville at the time of the building's holdup might have some connection. Oh, no, he's savvy. You think maybe him one of Dirk Billen's gang? Could be. I, I'm going to follow him, Toto. You stay here at the cafe until I get back. Ah, me wait. Listen. Good. I won't be gone too long. Adios. Adios. Easy, Silver. Stay. Come on, Silver. Meantime, inside the cafe, Fred and other of Dirk Billings' men had been sitting at a table in the rear. As Luke left, he watched intently as the stranger and the Indian spoke to the barkeep and then followed Luke from the cafe. Fred quickly got up and went out the back door after signaling to another man at a nearby table. What's up, Fred? What are you coming out the back way for? Listen, Lou. I was watching Luke when the barkeep said something to him that made him get riled up. When he went out, a stranger and an Indian seemed to question the barkeep. Then they followed Luke. They'd only just come in, too. Yeah, do you think... You... Wait a minute, Fred. What's the matter? I caught a glimpse of someone alongside the building. We pulled back just in time. 
There he goes. That's the stranger I told you about. Come on, we'll get our horses. Right. <clears throat> get leather quick. I figure that armory's following Luke. Steady. We'll take a shortcut at the creek and wait there in ambush till he gets there. Steady there, boy. Get on, get, get it. There. For some distance, the Lone Ranger followed Luke the outlaw. Finally, he came to a shallow creek and drew rein. Oh, sir. Oh, easy. Uh, we've lost the trail in that shallow water. <laughs> easy, Silver. I made sure we weren't followed, but from the way you're acting, easy, Silver. Creek, Mister, don't turn around. Better make it fast, too. Two of them waiting in an ambush. All right, I'm a reaching. Yeah, yeah, come on, boy. Come on. Where do you think you're going, mister? That's my business. Yeah? We know you were trailing a friend of ours. Yeah, here he comes now. He must have heard that shot. Hey, Luke! Come here! Oi, who? Who's this hombre, Fred? He was with an Indian in the cafe. We saw him question the barkeep after he left. Then they went out. You know where the Indian went? No, we didn't see him leave. So you were following me, huh? Maybe I was. We got three guns pointed at you, Savvy. I got a feeling you're trying to butt into something you'll be sorry for. Could be. What's more, there's something suspicious about you. Riding a fine stallion like that and having such fancy gear and all. I like to have a good horse and fancy gear. <laughs> yeah, and I bet Dirk would like to have him, too. Huh, Luke? Yeah, I don't know who Dirk is, but he won't get my horse and gear. Yeah, smart, hombre, aren't you? What were you following Luke for? <laughs> I even said I was following him. Well, we know you were, and we're going to find out. Oh, let's plug him and be done with it. Yeah, we might as well. Maybe he found out something. Maybe I followed Luke to have a talk with him. Why would you want to talk to me? Well, I could be mistaken, but you look to me like the type of hombre that might come in useful if you weren't too finicky about the law. Now, wait a minute. What's he driving at? <laughs> I'm beginning to get an idea, Fred. And maybe now I got an idea where an hombre like him would get a stallion in gear like he has. You catch on quick, Luke. And look, are we going to sit here in the saddle all night and let this coyote talk? Hold on, Lou. Now, look here, mister. Yeah? You say you wanted to talk to me because you might have something you were going to do that the law wouldn't like? That might be it, Luke. Yeah. You look like you can really handle those guns you're wearing. Give me a chance and I'll show you. Hey, Luke, you gone loco? <laughs> no, I just got an idea. Mister, if you're an owl hoot like you're trying to make me believe, how'd you like to join up with a real gang? I might consider it. That depends on the gang. Suppose it was the Dirk Billings gang. What then? Mm. I'd sure like to meet Billings. All right, then we'll take you to meet him. Hey, Luke, do you think that's a good idea? How do you know you can trust this hombre, Luke? I don't yet. Take his guns, Fred, while Lou and I keep him covered. All right. I got him. Say, plenty of fancy guns, too. <laughs> you seem to be doing all right for yourself, mister. What do you call yourself? You can call me Tex, if you like. Yes, I can uh, put my hands down now, huh? Sure. All right, Tex, you're coming along with us. And don't try to pull a fast one. It wouldn't be good for you. Go on, I'll take you to see Dirk Billings right now. Get it! Come on! Get up, get up, get up. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. After being stopped by the guns of the three outlaws, the Lone Ranger talked Luke into thinking he too was an outlaw. And finally, as he had hoped, Luke offered to take the Lone Ranger to meet Dirk Billings. First taking the masked man's guns, the outlaws started out with him, riding along in the shallow creek for some distance. Then they finally turned off and headed along a trail into the hills that led to a shack hidden in a hollow. They stopped there and dismounted. All right, Tex. Come on in. Sure. That hombre, Luke? Name is Tex. I brought him here to talk to you about joining in with us. It was Luke's idea, Dirk. Yeah, it was. And you ought to see the white stallion and fancy riding gear he has. And look at these fancy guns he was carrying. Well, it's the first time I ever saw guns like these, mister. Where did an hombre like you get guns like these? They belong to me now, so... What difference does it make? <laughs> That's his way of saying he stole them, I reckon. <laughs> so you think you want to join my gang, uh, Tex? Uh, that's what Luke just told you, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's right. But uh, I don't take any hombre who comes along into the gang without knowing something about him. Uh, maybe I don't want to talk about myself, Billy. <laughs> One thing I will say, you sure are nervy. From what I hear, I couldn't say the same about you. Yeah. Uh, he's big enough and tough enough. I'll say that much for him, Turk. Maybe. But before he gets back his guns, he's going to prove him some. Yeah? What way? After we eat, we're going to Rock Hill and hold up the cafe, savvy? Well? You won't have your guns. I'll carry them. When we hold them up... You'll be the one who'll go around and take their wallets after Fred gets their guns. You won't be giving me much of a chance to protect myself. Oh, we'll protect you, Tex. And if you don't do your part, it'll be our guns that'll slug you down. That's sure a good way to find out about Tex. If he takes the money from everybody, they'll know he's really one of us then, Tex. Yeah, they will. And as soon as we ride away from the cafe, Tex, after you do what you're supposed to... I'll give you your guns back. I'll be glad to get them. Hey, what happened to that Indian you had with you? He didn't fit into my plans, Luke. Well, are you willing to go along with us to the cafe and do like I said, Tex? I'll go along with you whenever you're ready. <laughs> Good. Now, Fred, you and Lou rustle up some grub right quick. All right, Dick. Then we'll all head for the Rock Hill Cafe. <laughs> Back in town, Tonto waited patiently for the Lone Ranger to return. After an hour had passed, he left the cafe and went to the place where he had left Scout. Oh, wait a long time, Scout. Lone Ranger not come back yet. Maybe it better we go to camp and wait. Easy, Scout. Easy, fella. Get him up, Scout. Darkness had fallen and a bright moon was shining when the outlaws with the Lone Ranger left the shack and went to their horses. You don't want to back out of it, do you, Tex? No, I don't. I guess he's proven already that he's all right, Dirk. I'll tell you about that after the whole of it. <laughs> Say, that sure is a mighty fine stallion you got there, Tex. Thanks. <laughs> all right, Tex, hit leather and ride up here with me. All right, he's a big fella. Let's get moving, man. Red and Jack are already at the cafe, waiting and keeping their eyes skinned. Get up there. Yeah, come, come on, get up. Arriving at the camp, Toto had prepared supper for himself. Then he settled down to wait for the Lone Ranger. As time went on, he became somewhat concerned and sat listening intently for the welcome sound of Silver's hoofbeats. Finally, he got to his feet as the distant sound of many hoofs came to his ears. Ah, many horsemen ride slow along the trail to town. That sounds like silver. Wind blow from us to them. If silver with him, it's easy for him to get sent a scout. 
strange. Maybe we'd better follow and make sure. Come, Scout. <laughs> easy, Scout, easy, fella. Get him up, Scout. When Dirk Billings and his men, with whom the Lone Ranger was riding in disguise, reached the edge of town, Dirk called a halt. Hello, oh, fella. Oh, oh, oh. Now, here's a plan. Yeah? We'll ride up to the cafe and dismount. Red and Jack will be inside near the bag. As soon as we get inside the door, I'll give some warning shots to get the crowd's attention. All of you have your guns ready. You gonna watch Tex, Dirk? You bet. I'll be watching him close. Red, you and Lou will collect the guns. That Tex will go around while we cover everybody and collect the money and bring it to me. You savvy that, Tex? Yeah. All right, then. Now, let's get going. Get up here. Yeah, come on. As Dirk Billings and the gang with the Lone Ranger left the outskirts and started into town, Tonto, who had ridden behind them, stopped his horse scout in the shadows and watched them for a moment. Oh, scout, oh, fella. Oh, fella. Oh. Ah. Them right into the pay. We notice Long Ra- Lone Ranger not have guns. That mean plenty trouble. Maybe it's better me get sheriff. Get him up, scout. Oh, scout, oh, fella. Once more, Tonto stood for a moment and watched as Dirk Billings and the gang reined to a stop before the cafe up the street. Then the Indian hurried up the steps of the porch and entered the sheriff's office. Well, Indian, what do you want? Uh, you get men. Come quick to cafe. Why? What happened at the cafe? It not happened yet, but it happened soon. Huh? I don't savvy. Gang, just come to town. Me think it Billings' gang. Me think them hold up cafe. <laughs> How do you know it's Billings? You not waste time. Get men quick. Look, all day long, crazy galoots come in here with loco stories about where the Billings gang might strike next. Why should I believe any Indian that comes no, wait, moseying in? Wait, wait. A... You know, man, that use bullet like this? Oh. Oh, a silver bullet. By thunder, I know of a master hombre who carries them. He rides with an Indian, but... Your name, what is it? Me tonto. Then you're the one who rides with him. Guess you must know there's trouble brewing. Where's the masked man now? Him with gang that go to cafe. Him not have guns. Them make him go, maybe. Him trying to catch gang. You get men, quick. Right. I'll get my deputies and we'll get over to the cafe pronto. When the Lone Ranger rode up the main street with the outlaws toward the cafe, thoughts had raced quickly through his mind. He felt sure that Tonto was still waiting in the cafe. It was this thought that had caused him to accept Dirk's plan without protest, in hopes that with Tonto's help, he could turn the tables on the outlaws once they were inside, even though Dirk had his guns. Then, in front of the cafe... Get your guns ready. We're ready, Dirk. Want to make them take off their boots like before? Yeah, after Tex collects some money from them. All right, let's go in. As the Lone Ranger walked in beside Dirk, he hurriedly glanced around for Tonto. Then momentarily his heart sank. Tonto wasn't there. He knew now that he was on the spot and would have to do some fast thinking to get out of the situation. It's Dirk Billings and his gang. Look, one of them hasn't got a gun. Don't let that worry you. The rest of us have guns and are ready to use. Red, you and Lou get everybody's gun. Right. Come on, Lou. Yeah. Hey, that hombre near the door was in here earlier. Huh? Now I know where I saw him. He was with Billings at Redville. The one without the gun was in here earlier, too. Yeah, sure. Some of us have been in here off and on all day long. You got all the guns, Dirk. Good. All right, Tex, it's time for you to do the collecting. Get everybody's money and hurry it up. For a moment, the Lone Ranger hesitated. He stood beside Dirk, and Luke, with drawn gun, stood behind and off to one side. Then the Lone Ranger took a step forward and moved quickly in front of Dirk, at the same time bending and grabbing Dirk's gun arm. I want that gun. Dirk was taken by surprise by the sudden move, and he found himself between the Lone Ranger and Luke. Luke couldn't fire without hitting the leader of the gang. Dirk called out. Fred, gun this coyote, quick. I'll get him, Dirk. You not shoot. There he is. I'll get him. Hang on, Dirk. Look at his me and my huh? men got you all taken. Hey, the, sheriff. the sheriff's men at the witness. I've got one of my guns. Now I'll take the other. The Embry without the gun tried to stop the holdout. Yeah, I thought he was with him. You all right, Kimasabi? Yes, Tonto. Nobody's getting me. 
I'll shoot my way out. No, you don't. No, my leg. That's my one quick shoot. Cowpoke sure is back. Oh, Get their guns, right. men. That's for you, mister. You almost got riddled with bullets from your own gang, seems like. I'm not a member of the gang, Sheriff. Isn't that right. Him telling me tell you about, Sheriff. Well, I'll be... But I thought that fellow always wore a black mask. Like this one, perhaps, huh? Hey, look, he put on the mask. Yeah. I don't get this at all. Uh, Tex, you're a fool. You had a good chance, but for some reason you tried to spoil it. You're hard to convince, Billings. You just heard me say I wasn't a member of your gang. And I'm not an outlaw. Yeah, but that mask... Look, Sheriff... He was trying to join up with us. He even came to our camp today. Then he went loco for some reason. He'll learn after a while, Sheriff. Otto, I don't know how you happened to come with us, Sheriff, at the right time. But I was mighty glad to see you. Well, me here hope beats the horses go past camp. Scout here, Silver Winnie. Me not sure, but me follow. See you with outlaws and me go get Sheriff. I remember Silver Winnie as we passed the camp. Well, come on, let's go. Adios, Sheriff. Adios. Okay. You gonna let that mask out who'd walk out like that? <laughs> well, looks like he sure fooled you, Dirk Billings. Huh? And caused your downfall in the bargain. If you hadn't spent so much time thinking about how smart you are, you might have put two and two together, seeing that stallion and fancy gun and riding gear. Uh, what are you talking about? What I mean is, you might have figured out that he's the hombre who's always on the side of the law. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. (laughs) 